Welcome to Lord and Richards Radio, a program that will enable you to become more financially independent and prosperous from a biblical point of view. Tune in each week to learn how to prosper through good markets and bad. Now, here's our host, Colin Richards, Denver's biblical investment advisor. Hi, friends. I'm glad to be with you today on Lord and Richards Radio. I'm Colin Richards founder and president of Lord & Richards. We're a team of advisors who are dedicated to helping people just like you retire financially independent. And we're doing that every single day. On this show, we're discussing investing and planning from the perspective of key biblical principles, a little bit different way of looking at money. We also talk about how to use methods and strategies that will enable you to prosper through both up and down markets. And that's so important in today's volatile world. I'd love to chat with you. My team and I would love to help you talk to you about your specific questions regarding retirement and saving and investing from a biblical point of view. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 720-372-0400. Again, that's 720-372-0400. I'd love to chat with you about how you can achieve financial independence from a biblical point of view. Or just check us out on the web at lordandrichards.com. Hey folks, I'm Colin Richards, president and founder of Lord & Richards, and I'm thrilled to be with you today here on another episode of the Lord & Richards Show. And as you know, as we're meeting with people just like you every single day, we're discovering that they have the same concerns, right? Because they're concerned that events out of their control, like wars and the economy and inflation, are going to mess up their retirement. And so what we do at Lord & Richards is we have a fantastic team of advisors that just surround you uh, with love and care and concern, and we build a plan for you to achieve financial independence so you can retire without worry. And you know, the reason why we want to do that is so that you can do amazing things with the resources that God has given you and with the people that you love. And so today we're going to be talking about the subject of grace giving found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 6 through 12 and in recent episodes we've been talking about Paul really encouraging the church at Corinth to give uh, you may know if you've studied that church that it was a very gifted church they had received many spiritual gifts and Paul had to provide instructions and counsel but it was also a church that had many challenges And it appears that one of their challenges was that they promised to step up to the plate and help the Jerusalem believers, but in reality what occurred was they were delaying their effort, and the Jerusalem believers were suffering from famine and other challenges. Paul wanted this church kind of across the ocean, across the sea, to step up and show their generosity. At the latter part of his admonition to them in chapter 9, verses 6 through 12, Paul says this, the point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work." I'm going to stop right there for a moment and talk a little bit about what Paul says. God is able to make all grace abound to you. One of the things that is most challenging about the Christian life is that it is a life lived by faith, not by sight. Most of us are not going to receive visions from heaven. We're not going to see all of our prayers answered in our lifetime We're going to have to wait for some things until we get to heaven. We're going to have to eventually um, put aside the need to see with our eyes and be willing to see with the eyes, the spiritual eyes of faith. One of those areas is in the area of giving. However, God in this particular area is willing to allow you to have some sense of his response and his heart and to see visibly the blessing come as a result of it. He says, if you're sowing sparingly, so if your giving is is thought of like a farmer sowing a field, then you're going to reap sparingly. Now think about that for a moment. When a a farmer sows a field, especially a modern field, 
We get that down to a science today, right? I've seen these great machines that are now powered by satellite and computers so that they know exactly which part of the field yields the most, what the, what the return was for that crop, and they can adjust and uh, move forward accordingly. Why? Because that farmer is a businessman and he wants to maximize his crop. Now think of giving from that perspective. If you're giving, you're almost in the same position of that farmer. You're wanting to maximize not only the seed that you're sowing, but what you reap in return. This is not to say that our primary motive in giving is only to receive back, but God is making a very clear point here through the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians and by extension to us, is if you'll look at your giving as an investment in eternity, an investment in eternity. As a businessman, I think this way. I think in terms of return on investment. If I invest in something, what is my expected return? And that's important to know. As you and I give, we are not giving just for this time, this short lifespan, but we're giving in the light of eternity, and what we hope to yield are results that are eternal in nature, so that you reap bountifully. It may not be the kind of reaping that everybody thinks of. They think of, well, if I give some of my money, I'll get back a lot of money in return. That may or may not be the case. God may allow you to reap in other ways that are far more eternally significant. Reap righteousness, the Bible says, right? Later on, he's going to quote this psalm, and we find it here in verse 9. He says, Psalm 112, 9, he quotes it, He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing, as in more sowing, and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. An amazing promise. And so what what Paul is quoting here is a point from the Psalm, uh, Psalm 112 about this blessed man. I call it the businessman psalm, about not only doing things ethically and rightly in your business, but being generous and watch God Put more back into your hands to give. Again, it may not be money. It might be time. (laughs) Time is our most valuable resource. The Bible is full of promises about how when we please God, he makes things work out for us. For example, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. How much time is wasted in dealing with enemies or attacks when By pleasing God, we let him go before and clear the field, so to speak. So God wants you to distribute freely, to give to the poor, for your righteousness to endure forever. These are eternal results. And what he doesn't want you to do is do it because you feel compelled, not by compulsion, Paul says, because God wants a cheerful. The word means hilarious giver. Somebody's just laughing and finding great joy in it. If your giving is not bringing you this this magnitude of joy, something is wrong, and you need to take a step back. You say, well, doesn't the Bible command us to give? Isn't there kind of a compulsion there? Well, certainly what I call the kindergarten standard for Israel was the tithe. But you know, Israel actually paid a number of tithes. This was under the dispensation of the law. It was God's people in kindergarten. But now, as we are in grown-up manhood, as we have the Spirit of God within us, as we have Christ himself living his life through us, the idea is that our giving is not being compelled to give. It is our heart to give, knowing that God is going to cause grace to abound back to you. It might be money. It might not be money. But what's going to happen is you're going to have all sufficiency at all times. Your needs are going to be covered, and you're going to abound in every good work. God's going to give you wonderful things to turn around and do good with. And then you, having distributed freely of yourself, your time, your resources to the poor, God will allow your righteousness to endure forever. It's a marvelous, marvelous set of verses pointing back to the Old Testament. Now, you and I need to apply this today. Are you in a position to be bountiful? Are you in a position to be a hilarious giver? Sometimes that's really hard when your own needs, when you're struggling. 
And so what you probably need is to sit down and get some counsel. If, if that's a challenge for you, you know that at Lauren Richards, we work with our clients so that you can do amazing things, like I said at the beginning, with the resources God's put at your disposal. Let us help you develop a plan for financial independence so you can do more and more for the Lord. It just takes a simple phone call. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 720-372-0400. Again, that's 720-372-0400. I'd love to chat with you about how you can achieve financial independence from a biblical point of view. Or just check us out on the web at lordandrichards.com. Hi, this is Colin Richards, president and founder of Lord and Richards, and I am thrilled to be with you for another episode of the Lord and Richards show. And you know that on this show, what we talk about is how you can achieve financial independence. That means doing the things that you love with the people that you love for all the reasons that are important to you. And one of the reasons why we need to do that is so that we can have uh, the opportunity to do amazing things with our resources for others. I've talked a lot about giving lately, but today I'm going to talk to you about the five foundational principles the five biblical priorities that Lord & Richards was founded on. Years ago, when I established this firm, I first of all wanted to name it for God, for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that's the Lord in Lord & Richards. I guess that get asked that all the time, and I tell people, I'm certainly not the Lord, so I'm the Richards. But then the question is often asked, well, how does faith, how does that work out in what you do at Lord & Richards? And so What I've done is I've distilled that down to five biblical priorities that apply to how we advise you about money and what you need to apply in your own financial planning. Because what we do is we help you build a plan, right? Not just uh, aiming at nothing, which you'll hit every time. We help you build a written plan so that you can achieve financial independence and retire without worry. Well, how does that start? Well, I can give you the secret personally to wealth, financial independence, all of these things. And it starts with number one. And many people wonder, well, what's number one? If you ask Warren Buffett, he'll say, don't lose your money, right? (laughs) And then number two is C number one. Well, in our case, number one is a little bit different. It's important to manage risk and to not lose money. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But first and foremost, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's where we get wisdom and instruction. And so principle number one, fear the Lord. Um, It's not what you think. A lot of people think, well, does this mean I just walk around trembling all the time, waiting for God to zap me? No, the idea here is that you want to have a life that is lived with regard for and under the authority of Almighty God. In fearing God, it actually opens the door for great blessings and for loving God. When Jesus was asked what the greatest commandments were, he gave two. And you know the first one, and it came right out of the Old Testament. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. This is the most important thing for us. And then secondly, love your neighbor, just like you would try to love yourself or your family or your loved ones. There's another great verse here. It's found in Proverbs 10, 22, and it says this, The blessing of the Lord makes rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. You know, there are a lot of wealthy people, people from an earthly standpoint, who are loaded up with money, big bank accounts. And it is interesting, as we've gone through a banking crisis, to see how people can shake in their boots and realize how money can just grow wings and fly away. And yet, what God does is he provides you a kind of a wealth with his blessing that does not come with sorrow. Many of these celebrities and multimillionaires and billionaires have lives full of sorrow. They really wish that they had the blessing of God on their life. So this is why I always say the fear of the Lord, that's principle number one, put him first. Number two, many people that I talk to struggle with debt. And this is not a show where we deal primarily with this subject. Most of the people that I'm talking to are coming to me wanting to invest for the future and create a plan for the future. But at the same time, if you're saddled with unnecessary debt, Proverbs 22, verse 7 says, the borrower is the slave or servant to the lender. You don't want to be in a position where others can force you to do things against your will. That's what a slave is or a servant. 
you want to be in a position where you're financially independent. Now, let me add a couple of caveats, and I know there's disagreement about this, but I want to point out from personal experience, as well as biblical principle, that if you rent your home, over time you'll build no value in that, correct? You're just paying that to someone else who's renting it out to you. And so we believe that renting a home long-term is a downward spiral, because that rent typically is going up, 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 up. If you want to get a control on your housing expenses, purchase a home and go ahead, if necessary, and borrow for a mortgage. You say, well, Colin, why is that? Don't I become a slave? Well, if you're renting a home, you can easily be removed from that home against your will. If you're borrowing and able to make the payments, you can continue indefinitely. In addition, you gradually come to own that home cash. And then finally, your housing costs are under better control because your principal and interest payments, if you get a fixed note, are level. What moves is your taxes and your insurance, but that's only a part of your payment. So your housing costs should go up less than the rate of general inflation if you own your home and have a mortgage. So getting that equity long-term is going to be real favorable for you, and it's going to eventually reduce your housing costs when you retire. Now, when you borrow for things that are vanity purchases, uh, nice cars, clothing, trips, those kinds of things, that is absolutely the wrong kind of lending. Usually you're paying a, a very high rate. And usually you're not investing in real estate like you would in your own home. Rather, you are merely watching your money go into a bag with holes in it. So principle number one, fear the Lord. Principle number two, eliminate debt because the borrower is servant to the lender. In our next segment, we're going to talk about our next three and final of our five biblical priorities. But I just want to say that the people we're talking to every single day are concerned about what's going on in this world. And let me give you some hope. We can help you provide a written plan so that you can achieve financial independence without worry. And it's critical that we have a simple conversation to get things started today. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 720-372-0400. Again, that's 720-372-0400. I'd love to chat with you about how you can achieve financial independence from a biblical point of view. Or just check us out on the web at lordandrichards.com. Hi friends, this is Colin Richards, founder and president of Lord & Richards, and I'm excited to be with you today on yet another episode of the Lord & Richards Show. And then in this particular segment, we're going to continue a discussion we started in our prior segment on Lord & Richards' five biblical priorities, the values that were foundational when I founded this firm. And you may recall the first was to fear the Lord, based on the Bible, uh, encouraging us to put fearing the Lord at the beginning of wisdom, and number two, to eliminate debt. The borrower is servant to the lender. And now we're going to continue in this segment by discussing the final three. Here's the next one. Number three, manage risk as a steward. If you'll begin to see that the money that God has put into your hands, whether you give it away or whether you use it for your needs, is his money. It's his resources. We are stewards, the Bible says, and it is accounted in stewards that you be found faithful, trustworthy, a person of highest integrity. Have you ever really thought about that, that the money that is in your hands is not really yours? When you pass away, it's going to be handed off to another steward and so on and so on down through the generations until Christ comes. And so manage risk from that standpoint. That's a little bit different than somebody who thinks money is theirs and gambles it away. The Bible says this, Proverbs 13, 11, wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. Let me say that again. Wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. The idea being that taking big risks to try to make big gains is a losing strategy and you're going to see your money dwindle. I've seen it so many times. Would it surprise you to know 
that as we bring to the table risk management, institutional risk management for our clients, that many people who were taking the biggest risks actually have the lowest probability of success in making it to and through retirement without losing their money, running out of money. It seems counterintuitive. Well, I thought if I got the biggest growth, but it's actually the downside risks that have the biggest impact. And we can show you that scientifically and using software. The next principle, principle number four, provide for one another in old age. Provide for one another in old age. You say, well, where does the Bible talk about that? Well, Psalm 71, 9 says this, do not cast me off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength is spent. The psalmist later on goes on and says, I want to declare you, I want to declare your righteousness to the next generation. I want to live into old age. But you know what? If God's not going to forsake us, if he's not going to cast us off, then certainly for those we love, we're not going to do that. The biggest cause of bankruptcy in retirement is chronic illness, or what some people call long-term care. These are expenses that are not going to be paid for by your health insurance or by Medicare beyond 90 days. These are expenses incurred when you can't do two of six activities of daily living, such as walking and feeding yourself and so forth. And they can be enormous. We are uh, calculating right now average expenses for skilled nursing in the neighborhood of 116000 per year and going up rapidly at 4.35% inflation. At that rate, most of my 60-year-old clients, if this were to happen in their 80s, would have a million dollars in costs over a typical four-year period. That can easily bankrupt what we might call the well spouse, the person left behind. Often it's you ladies. And you know what? What we want to do is have a written plan as to how we're going to handle that. You say, oh, well, I don't want to buy long-term care insurance. That's really expensive. I agree with you. Did you know that there are alternate, alternative and creative ways for you to cover that so that you're not bankrupted by the high costs of care? And then fifth and finally, the Bible encourages you to consider your legacy. You know, I ask every person that sits down in my office, well, what do you want to have happen when you pass away? Because it's going to happen, right? Eventually, we'll step out into eternity. First of all, I hope that your eternity is secure in Christ. But secondly, I hope you're thinking about where that money is going to go and who's going to be the next steward of that money. If you've wisely taught your children, the Bible gives you real promises here. Proverbs 13, 22 says, A good man, or I would add a woman, leaves an inheritance to his children's children. This means you can totally skip your kids and go right to the grandkids. No, I'm kidding. But the idea being it, it's a multi-generational approach to what you leave behind. Teach your children about how to give. I have an outstanding client right now that is doing just that and is leaving a considerable legacy. And he's teaching his children from the Bible what to do with wealth and prosperity and how to be a blessing to others. That is incredible. And I want to commend that example to all of us. I think we can all do that. But wherever God directs you to leave it, don't just have no plan. Because most of the clients we work with at Lord & Richards, however they are when they come to us, by the end of life are typically going to be leaving behind often a significant legacy. And we want to plan in advance for that not to all go to nursing homes and not to all go to buying and building more government buildings right through taxes. And that's the default. That's the default. It's like a great cone. It's like a great funnel. And as we pass away, those funnels are just pulling everything down through taxes, through health care. But you know what? You can get proactive and get on the front end of it. So these are the five foundational principles derived from the Bible, five biblical priorities that undergird the planning we do at Lord & Richards. And at Lord & Richards, we're not just brokers. We're not just money managers. Oh, yes, certainly we help you manage your money, but we do it in the context of a carefully written and conceived plan that acknowledges first and foremost that God is number one, helps you get rid of any debt as needed, helps you manage risk as a steward, helps you take care of one another in old age, and helps you create a legacy that will continue to do good long after you're gone. That's an incredible plan. And my clients who have those plans are exceedingly happy with those plans and are now impacting lives beyond their own. 
Could that be you? Absolutely. At our office, we sit down with people just like you every single day and have these delightful conversations with a wonderful homemade cookie, my wife's recipe, by the way, and a cup of coffee or tea and some water and whatever it is. And we sit down in a beautiful environment and we just talk to you about what's important to you. What are your priorities? These are our priorities, but what are your priorities and how can we help you build that plan so that you never have to worry about financial independence ever again? Do you know for certain that you're financially independent? Uh, You say, well, my advisor says I am. Yeah, but have you seen it worked out empirically in data? Do you know for sure that everything's going to work out okay? Or are you just trusting to chance? I want to help you today. So the first step is to give us a call, pick up the phone, visit us on the web at lordandrichards.com, or send us a note through our website. And then what happens is we'll sit down for a process we call discovery, where we'll learn more about you and take the next steps to achieving financial independence. I would love to help you. My team and I would love to help you. It simply begins with a phone call. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 720-372-0400. Again, that's 720-372-0400. I'd love to chat with you about how you can achieve financial independence from a biblical point of view. Or just check us out on the web at lordandrichards.com. Investment advisory service is offered only by duly registered individuals through AE Wealth Management, LLC.